Hey guys, Trent here coming at you with another video. So in this video, we'll look at a small little thrift pickup I got. We'll look at some sales, of course. But uh, before that, I want to give you my advice on what to do whenever your sales slow down on eBay. So if you're new to my channel, welcome in. My name is Trent. I'm a part-time reseller on eBay. I do it for fun and profit, and I take you along for the journey. So please hit that subscribe button for more great videos in the future. Uh, LMY7 commented, my sales died this week. Okay, so great comment. Uh, appreciate the comment. Uh, I hear this quite often. Uh, you, make, you see a lot of videos about it, that my sales died this week. You see, then you'll see a lot of people chiming in that, yeah, my sales dropped off the map too, you know. Uh, there's a lot of videos, a lot of advice out there on how to get your sales boosted up, talking about algorithmic stuff, uh, you know. There, there's all different kinds of tips and tricks, advice videos, so I wanted uh, to give an advice video on what to do whenever your sales slow down for my channel. So the big trick, the big secret on how to get past a sales slowdown is to keep doing the exact same thing that you were doing before that made you successful. Okay, what should you change? You should change absolutely nothing. If you were successful before and you were successfully finding good items and making good profits on those items, unless there's a rare instance where an item has kind of faded out of, you know, uh, of popularity, uh, generally speaking, what you need to do is just take a step back, reevaluate, and Reminisce on what it was you were doing that made you successful consistently making sales and go ahead and do that Do more of the same. That's what you need to do. You don't need to beat an algorithm You don't need to start selling different kind of stuff. You don't need to buy a course. You don't need to do all these things Okay, just keep doing what it was that you did before that made you successful on eBay in the first place if you start doing that you may find that you realize that you were basically not doing that and that's why you had a sales load slow down to begin with maybe you weren't listing as much and you're not being honest with yourself honestly I don't list a whole lot myself but uh, you know I, I make consistent sales occasionally I'll start to see it slow down and I'll say well I need to I need to do some listing you know I've found that most of the time by the time I take notice enough to complain about my sales slowing down they start to pick up back, back up again so I, might, I made this video and gave this advice, not because I was trying to trick you, although I'm, you know, maybe it's a clickbaity title, but it's just the truth in my opinion. There is no secret, it's just continuing to put in that work because eBay, you know, although you can make it fun, <laughs> it is work, you know? So you put in the time and the effort, you're gonna get the results. And just because maybe one week the sales slow down uh, because of maybe what's going on and out there in the world, you know, that's just gonna happen. Uh, before you know it, you know, people are going to spend money. Those of you that are new to eBay and are trying to figure it out, continue to study the videos um, of other YouTubers that are providing all those good bolos and good tips. Uh, find the bits and pieces that you like to try to go out and sell. And you'll find very quickly that as you start seeking those items that interest you based on other YouTubers and uh, based on other eBay sellers, uh, you'll start to find items that are more that you can focus in on as your expertise like me for example I, when I first started selling on eBay back in 2012 uh, there wasn't hardly as many youtubers and a lot of them though at least the ones that I happened to find were mainly doing stuff like selling clothing so I started doing kind of a similar thing for a while then found out really quick that that's not for me uh, and kind of shifted into more hard goodies type type stuff and then now it's I basically look for toys first and find a bunch of other neat little items along the way. So in conclusion, if you're new, find that niche and stick with it. And whenever you start seeing that success, uh, you can you know that, I mean, the market doesn't change that fast to where you're going to notice like you're doing something wrong. If you're not doing something wrong, you just need to stay consistent and you're going to get consistent, generally speaking, results. There might be a little gap of slowdown every once in a while, but it's not going to be too much. And for those of you who are experienced sellers and you can't understand why the sales just suddenly dropped off the face of the earth, just take a step back and reevaluate what it is that you're not doing that you were doing before. And pretty quickly you're gonna figure out it was probably that you're just not putting in as much work is probably what it is. But you know, just up, up your game and you're gonna start recovering from that sales slowdown. All right, I got 
short and sweet little thrift haul. I went to the big, uh, I guess it's not a haul, but it's so, so small, right? It's a thrift small, we'll call it that. Uh, there was a, a few good Nerf items. I went to the one that used to be the Hot Spots Thrift Store, but it seems like on Friday there's pretty good competition and it, it got cleaned out. If my wife goes for me like on a Tuesday or something, uh, that's when she comes home with a huge stack of Nerf. But uh, anyways, let's see what I got. I picked up a $1.99 remote. This is a Sony AV system remote. Very nice and clean. Uh, I think this is about a $15 remote. Uh, remote controls when they're, you know, they're easy to sell, uh, easy to test. I don't know if the bad, there is batteries in here. I'm going to, I don't know if the battery uh, is working to show that I can test it on this camera. But anyways, very cheap and you look up the model number and you can find them that sell for 15, 20, 25 bucks. You know, not all of them do, a lot of them don't. So just search up the model number real quick and see if it's worth your time. And my recommendation is to always check that battery compartment. You know, it, if it's a corroded battery compartment, you may decide that it's not worth your time as well. But if you do want to clean out corroded battery compartments, I have a video on that too. You can go find that video. All right, I found another uh, Disney's Moana. Uh, this is the one by Jack Pacific, I think. There's two different variants of this, one by Jack Pacific and one by the Disney store, I think. Uh, but they're both good sellers. Uh, this was $3.99. Usually you'll find it for $1.99, $2.99. Seems like this place has upped their prices a little bit too. Maybe they got some new people in there that are new pricers. But this is like uh, maybe like a $30 item or even more, believe it or not. Uh, so glad to find these. There was another one in there, but the tip was missing. So uh, always glad to find those so far. I found maybe three or four of them. So I found a couple nerfs. I threw a few back because again, they upped their prices. So there was like a disruptor there, which I would normally pick up, but they wanted $3.99 for it, which is usually what you pay for a bigger blaster. But there was a modulus regulator, which is a pretty nice uh, modulus blaster, fully automatic. Uh, this one was, uh, I think it was $3.99. I don't know where the price went, actually. Lost my price tag, but modulus regulator. And finally, I found another zombie strike blaster. This is the first time I've seen this one. This is a, a revolution, a rev alternator. I think this is the first, or I think this is a, kind of a newer one. Let me see if I can find the year on it. Maybe that's why the first time I've seen it in a thrift store bin. Wow, can't find the year on it, but this one looks pretty neat. It's got a flywheel that you charge up. But uh, we'll test it out and see, but uh, uh, zombie strike, I, I like to sell and uh, this is a new piece for that line that I've never seen before. So pretty cool. All right, I sold this Nerf uh, Raven. This one's a pretty sought after one, I guess, uh, individually. It sold total price paid by the customer $31.99. And like I mentioned, uh, this is only the second time I've ever found this one. Uh, it's getting up there in age. It's from 2011. So the Raven, good enough for individual sale. So I'll just put it in this box and crop the box down a little bit. And that should still put me right under two pounds. Yeah, right at two pounds. All right, not too long ago for $4.99, I bought a blaster called the uh, the Stampede. Uh, ended up not working, uh, so I took the battery tray out of the Stampede to sell it, and it sold uh, total price paid by the customer $13.33. And I just so happened to have this box from when I bought a light bulb uh, that I think is gonna fit this thing perfectly. Yeah, how about that? Look at that. <laughs> Don't always get that lucky. <laughs> Seven ounces. Okay, and speaking of Nerf guns that I don't find very often, like the Raven, 
Here's one that's the first time I've ever found these, and I found two of them at the same time. This is a Dart Tag Snapfire. There's two of them. And Ryan Engelstad gave me a little lesson on these. These are, I think he said these ones were exclusives. But anyways, uh, they have adjustable speed and power and they work on their own power, no batteries or anything. But mine doesn't seem to work properly anymore. Both of them. Uh, either way, I paid like $2.99 for the bag with those in it. And these are I advertise as non-working. And uh, they just sold and I messaged the buyer, said, uh, do you understand these are not working? And they said, yes, they understand. So they paid $27.82 total paid by the customer for these two non-working snap fires. So here's what those look like. They got an eight on them. Oh, on this side, they got an eight. Cause they hold eight rounds. Uh, they say dart tag and they have this uh, adjustable speed and power lever that when you twist this, this, this uh, dial goes up and down and whether you want more speed or more power for your shots. However, these don't work. So I wasn't ever, I wasn't ever able to see how that act function actually works. I've never had this before. So those are worth some, a little bit more money than your regular average everyday Nerf blaster. It's kind of an oversized box, but I got plenty of packing paper. So it should be fine. three pounder okay I sold this vintage uh, 1996 or 7 what's the year 1996 Mattel Buzz Lightyear uh, this is a little spinning disc shooter so these things fly in the air you t wind them up wind it up and shoots it and it shoots flying discs uh, kind of a uncommon toy boy I tell you don't underestimate Toy Story stuff, man. That this stuff is good. Total price paid by the customer, uh, thirty-eight dollars and sixty-six cents. This was a thrift store find. Oh, this hit guy. Paper. two-pounder all right I sold some more uh, Star Wars ornaments so I lotted these uh, Kurt Kurt S Adler ornaments together from my Star Wars Christmas ornament lot there's three different ones there's Vader uh, Luke and uh, a little uh, a five pack with a bunch of smaller figures uh, total price paid by the customer $27.77 for those like those will fit in there another two pounder all right guys well that's going to do it for this video i hope you enjoyed please like comment and subscribe let me know about any interesting ebay tips tricks finds or leave a comment down in the comment section to say hi or just your questions are great i can use that to make a video topic hope you enjoyed and have a good one